Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're reviewing a Volkswagen Jetta, and this particular one happens to have a manual transmission. Before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Ken Garf Volkswagen here in Orem, Utah, for giving me some time with this car. This particular one is still available for sale for the time being, so if you're interested, I'll include a link to their website in the description down below. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below as well. Let's get into it. So powering this Jetta is a turbocharged 1.5 liter four cylinder that goes through a six speed manual transmission. Fuel economy is 29 around town and then 42 on the highway with power outputs being 158 horsepower and then 184 pound feet of torque. Now, before we go over the front end, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the hood, you guys can see you've got really cool lines there on either side, but notice it's just flat there in the center. They keep it pretty simplistic. Now popping down below, you guys can see here with the LED lights, I think they actually look really sharp. And then I love how that kind of like trim from the light goes into the grill here. I think that looks really good as well. You've got the Volkswagen logo front and center, and then you guys can see all of the trim here at the bottom. And putting it all together, this is just a handsome looking car overall, I'd say. Come around the side here, time wheel setup is 205, 60, 16 in the front and over in the rear as well. And then you guys can see the design on the wheels. Look at the silver on the top and notice that's like black below that. I think that looks really sharp. I've always been a big fan of the cut here in the fender with the Jetta and then also this line that goes across the side as well. And when you look at the Jetta from the side view here, you really cannot tell the difference between this and like an Audi, for example. And so that's one of the cool things about this car. Now here is the key fob. You've got your lock function, your unlock function, the opening for the trunk, and then you got the little flip out key as well, which kind of adds to the flare. But we'll hold that down. So I do want to mention when you do the trunk popping function, it like opens all the way up and it's kind of aggressive with how it opens. But anyways, we've got these right here to throw down these seats. And when it comes to storage space, it's actually super practical here in the rear. And then if you're wondering when you're all done, just, you know, plop. Tail lights here on the Jetta, also really cool. And then of course you got your regular logos, badges, all that fun stuff. And then notice how the exhaust tip is kind of hidden. Now wrapping things up, let me know what you guys think about the style here on the Jetta. But again, it shares a lot of style cues with its Audi siblings. And so I think it looks good. Now popping inside, first off, I love the shape of the door handle here. I think that's pretty cool. You get some padding here on the armrest and then some nice storage here on the door panel. And then here are these seats. You can see cloth. Uh, look at the inserts here in the center. Then you got some nice stitching on them as well. Now this is actually quite impressive. There is quite a bit of space here in the rear when it comes to legroom and then also headroom as well. Now taking a look at the front door panel, you guys can see this trim piece that goes across. That's pretty cool. And then look at the handle down below. And then again, the padding with the stitching. We've got all of our window controls right here and then the mirror adjustments as well. And then by the way, we do have blind spot monitoring with the mirrors. And then here's the front seat. Look at the stitching. Then you guys can see the trim goes down the center. These seats are manually adjustable. And speaking of manuals, three pedal layout, folks. Now taking a look at the steering wheel, I really like the design. It actually has this like nice grippy feel to it. And this is pretty premium looking, especially considering this is more of like a baseline Jetta. We've got like our volume controls here. You've got cruise control as well. Some controls for the center stack. And then of course, regular stocks here on the back. Now this actually has this full digital gauge cluster, which again is pretty surprising. Most cars in this segment will just have, you know, basically a fully analog gauge cluster. Notice we can actually change the view. Sorry about the glare here. It's kind of messing up, but you can actually change like what this shows. I think the uh, one that you probably wanted to show is the RPMs considering this is a manual. And then in reverse, we have a backup camera here with trajectory lines. Now as for the rest of the infotainment system itself, you've got these little shortcut buttons here on the side to basically help you get into different tabs. Um, this is obviously not Volkswagen's like, you know, fully upgraded infotainment system, but it still responds really well. And the shortcut buttons make using it even better. Now, I think this is pretty nice. Like the dash itself is actually soft touch and they have this like stitching that goes across as well. And then look at the vents here. I think the shape's pretty cool. And then we have a single zone climate here down below. And then you can see some USBs and then this is like a little storage space. 
So here's our shifter for the six speed manual transmission. We'll obviously talk about this more when we drive it. A uh, reverse lockout, you push down, go over and up. So you get into reverse. Got a 12 volt right next to it, parking brake right next to it. And then you have your eco mode. There's no uh, sport mode or anything like that, which is kind of interesting. Got some cup holders here and then center console. And you just lift it up, which is kind of weird. I'm used to like clicking latches. I always find it interesting to have Volkswagen center consoles are light, but it actually makes sense because then you can actually see if uh, most center consoles are like black inside, so it's kind of harder to see. And then, yeah, pretty spacious club box overall. And then finish things up top, we have a manual mirror dimmer and then just a lighter colored headliner. Now this right here is my favorite part. I've been uh, focusing on reviewing more affordable cars and this is definitely a more affordable car. So um, 1.5 TS Jetta and it looks like most everything, sorry about the lighting, this is horrible. <laughs> most everything is standard. You guys can see like the warranty information over there. Um, but there's your base price. We do have some options added to this. It looks like pretty inexpensive overall. Uh, biggest option is actually destination charge. Anyways, $22,156. Let's see how it drives. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility over the hood, both of the mirrors. Do a blind spot monitoring, and then throughout the rest of the rear. And I was at a King Ranch. Looks like it. Let us Jetta away. <laughs> um, so I don't think I have ever. I'm not sure. I, I've reviewed a GLI with a manual, but I don't think I've ever reviewed like a regular a Jetta with a manual transmission. And so this, frankly, will be a new experience for me. First off, the shifter is really easy to use. Um, I think that the the clutch engagement, I mean, that's obviously a difficulty for like every, you know, person that's trying to learn how to drive manual. Um, but with this one, I, I think that being turbocharged and everything, I think that might, you know, add an extra layer of learning uh, to the learning curve of trying, trying to drive a manual. But what I will say is this is, it's, it's really easy to drive, frankly. So I think overall this would be a great car to learn how to drive manual if you don't know how to drive manual already. Yeah, it's super smooth. It's not necessarily, like the shifter, you can tell that Volkswagen has kind of like tuned the overall setup on this shifter for commuting purposes, which makes sense because I mean, that's ultimately what this car is about. Yeah, really good power actually. Just for, again, regular day-to-day -day use, it's, it's, it's quite impressive, indeed. Yeah, I love the, I actually really like the shifter. Um, the seats are pretty comfortable as well. Bolstering on them is pretty open, so like if you're a large person, then I think you'd be perfectly fine in these seats. Also, I think this might be like one of the best driving routes I have uh, ever found with a uh, <laughs> filling with a dealership. This is pretty good. Yeah, you can definitely you can definitely tell there's a bit of bit of lag, but I mean again that's that's with turbocharged engines. But I mean for the segment that this is in, this thing is super peppy. That is for sure. Because most cars in the segment are not turbocharged. Oh yeah, wow, this thing rips. I just wasn't getting into it enough. <laughs> this thing's quick. This thing's really quick, actually. Again, most cars in this segment don't have a manual offered at all. And, you know, not only are they automatic link, but they're usually CVTs, right? Think like Honda Civic, for example. You have to go to an SI or get like the uh, Sport Touring or the Civic Type R to get a manual transmission. Um, and then you can get a manual in the Corolla, but again, the Corolla is, um, it's naturally aspirated. So this feels like a lot stronger, especially here at higher elevation. I think like right here in this area, I think we're just over 4,000 feet elevation. It's actually pretty easy to rev match downshift too. It's, it's, um, it's relatively blippable overall. So summing things up, um, I mean, $22,000 folks, you can't go wrong with that. This is super affordable in today's world where everything, you know, it, it seems like everything's, you know, $50,000 plus. I, I feel like I have broken record at this point, but seriously, everything's so expensive in today's world. And this, is super affordable. So let me know what you guys think about this. Um, I will have a review on the 
automatic as well. Um, I'll probably post that review second because I'll tell you guys if I like the manual, the automatic in this car more. Um, but let me know what you think about the manual.